So, uh, you can please share again. What? So, please share your screen again. I just set up. Okay. Can I share Thank, you again? Thank you. This will stop all the screen sharing. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, this is something which I was afraid. No, no, it doesn't. Okay. And you see my pointer, right? Hello, Julie. You see my pointer, right, on the screen? I can see your screen. Yeah, you see my screen, I'm asking uh, the pointer on the screen, uh, which is moving. You see it. Okay, I see Drew and you muted yourself, unmuted, okay. Yes, uh, we'll, wait. we'll wait for like uh, maybe one or two more minutes. Okay. Is your mother tongue Ruski? Yes. Okay. So maybe we can uh, start. So people will regularly join in and some of people will watch YouTube later, YouTube live later. So welcome everyone to quantum math and math and physics seminar series. Today it is our great honor to invite Professor Edward Surya from Stony Brook University and also Nuclear Theory Center. Uh, we will, uh, he will be speaking about applications of instanton spellrons and instanton ions in QCD. So uh, please, audience, uh, feel free to 
interact and ask questions during the talk. You may raise your hand first. And that's directly welcome, uh, Edward. The talk will be uh, 19 minutes, but no hard time constraint. So uh, please take over. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so this is my title. And uh, I acknowledge my recent collaborators. Recent, I mean that in general, this topic is about uh, covered 40 years. And uh, of course, there are many other people during this time. The uh, little animal on the right is a hedgehog, which is topological and non-trivial animal, which is not very well known in uh, America, but this is it. Ah, now this thing again. Okay, so this is my outline. I start from some uh, general things which are not uh, recent. This is in blue, uh, describing uh, ge general objects, which I will speak about, just introduce a list, uh, then des describe this, what we call topological landscape and uh, instant and ensemble in the vacuum of QCD. Uh, so these are, I hope relatively quickly, these are mostly material from uh, 20, 30 years ago. And the red is uh, new stuff, which I want to tell you. So one example of importance of uh, instantons is that they generate a specific interaction between quarks described by so-called Toft Lagrangian. And uh, one application I will uh, give you, there are many more. Then uh, uh, I will speak about constituents of instantons, which are called instant dials, instant monopoles. And uh, these are semi-classical objects. And so statistical mechanics of uh, ensemble of them, which is kind of similar to condensed meta uh, describe two phase transitions that we have in QCD, the confinement and the color of symmetry restoration. And QCD can be deformed in some form. Uh, so I will describe two of those deformations and these deformations allow to move either one or the other phase transition and we can study how that happens. We also have lattice gauge theory, which uh, calculate everything from first principles in this game. It's very costly. Uh, it uh, involves something of the order of 1 billion variables, but uh, the result on the, these transitions from lattice can be compared to what we do from this uh, semi-classical theory. Now, uh, the last thing which uh, I will tell you is the so-called Poisson duality. So it turned out that uh, you can develop two completely differently looking uh, descriptions which lead to the same partition function at the end. So this is my map once again. So this uh, blue part is related to confinement. Now, confinement in QCD, a simple formulation is that there are no uh, colored object in the spectrum. A more mathematical uh, formulation was proposed by Ken Wilson is that a loop uh, with Clark, uh, average of the loop with some certain integral going around, decays in the area, and uh, that depends on topological objects, which are these blue lines called center vortices. Now, uh, the phase, if you go around it, uh, is pi. So the contribution of a vertex going through the loop is a minus one. So if you have enough of them, you have a Wilson criteria to confinement, namely the uh, average of the Wilson loop decays as uh, exponential of the area of the loop. Now, when two of these objects combine together and you have uh, the total phase become two pi, other than pi, that is called Dirac string. The objects which are connected by Dirac string are magnetic monopoles. So yes, we identify magnetic monopoles and some theories like similar to QCD, but not QCD, 
we have a, a subclassical solution for monopoles in QCD. We don't, we don't have a joint scalar on QCD. But on the latest, we do find such objects, and we see that uh, the confinement in language of monopoles is very physical. It's both Einstein condensation of these objects. Now, if I jump to this yellow side, uh, if we go, uh, our excuse, partition... excuse me. Mm -hmm. When you say the dimension here, is that a dimension of space time here? When you yeah, say monopole, is, is, monopole is a, a 3D object, yes? It can move in time. So it is a particle, basically, yes? In four dimensions of space time, monopole have trajectories. Yes. 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 Particles. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Okay. Now, if you go to this yellow part, uh, we have solutions in 4D in Euclidean four dimensions. When time changed to I time, all four coordinates become equal, and we have spherical symmetric solutions in four dimensions of so Young's equation called instanton, discovered in the 70s. And uh, it has a fermionic zero mode, which is also four dimensional. And uh, if we have, for example, two types of quarks up and down, uh, then that generate each instanton becomes effective operator with four fermionic lines. This interaction between quarks is very important and uh, I will speak about it uh, a lot. Now, uh, when we go to finite temperature, uh, finite temperature is introduced by so-called Matsubara time, which in other words, uh, time is defined on a circle and period circumference of this circle is h bar over temperature. This theory describes finite temperature quantum mechanics, other mechanical system, as uh, I'm sure most of you know very well. And um, uh, in QCD, uh, the same thing happened. But uh, what is important is that this observable, there is observable, which in mathematics would be called holonomy. In uh, physics, uh, here it is called Polyakov line. So it's integral of some a mu over line going around this periodic time. It's an incorrectable cycle. So it's gauge invariant operator. And uh, it's uh, vacuum expectation value is not zero. So what it means is that um, field A naught, one component of the gauge field is not zero. It's some value. And uh, so people were interested in uh, generalizing instantons to the case when at large distances, uh, A naught do not go to zero, but to that value. That led to completely new solutions. So the instanton splits into NC separate objects. I draw three because QCD has SU3, three colors. And these objects uh, happen to be monopoles. They are connected by Dirac strings and they have fractional topological charge, not one of them, not uh, any rational, it's any value. And the theory which says that topological charges quantized to integer is avoided because they are not independent. They are related, they are connected by Dirac string. So, so that would be another players. And then there is this Poisson duality, which tell us that if we do in terms of monopoles, not semi-classical or semi-classical and instant on dions, we have two different uh, form looking formulas, which at the end become the same partition function. So all of this is in this book and uh, which appeared this summer. So uh, that is where it is done by detail. Do you have questions? Oh yes, may I ask? So just make sure, a uh, separate question about the dimensionality. So uh, here you mentioned the instant on dion. I suppose here you are consider the four dimensional space time instant on and Okay, so the instant on is an Euclidean four dimensions. So it's completely four dimensional symmetric Euclidean space. Instant on dions are at finite temperature solution. So here time is compactified on the circle. So it's R cube times circle. And uh, high temperature means small circle, low temperature means high large circle, yes? Okay, I see. So let me just summarize, make sure I understand. So the instanton is a, a 
a point object into the space time, while the dion is actually the uh, endpoint for the open end of some uh, Wilson to hook line operator, which is the 1D line operator's uh, boundary ends. But you compatibilize 4D to 3D, so both objects can be a point, point object in that compatible three dimensional space. Right. And that's why you that's why you consider the the composite of the instant and dion. Is that right? right. Otherwise, but I was asking just... the dimensionality my Okay, the same. so instant and dion is uh, just still four dimensional object, and uh, collective coordinate which describe them, and uh, this is the number of coordinates we need to integrate uh, when we do the ensemble, is four. So three of them are free free location, uh, and then uh, there is one more phase on it. And therefore, uh, the statistical ensemble I will speak about of these guys is four dimensions times number of these guys. The monopole is a different thing. Monopole is a particle. So if you want to do theory of monopoles, we need to do path integral over monopole paths. So monopole is really a 3D object. This object has still four dimensions. Uh, but, 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 but yes, but, but let, me, let me make sure it, it, it's instant of zero dimension in 4D dionysis. Dion, do, do, you, do you want to these consider are, the, the, the line of instant on they, they are still uh, four dimensional. They are three dimensional solution with some uh, time dependent twist, etc. So, in principle, they are four dimensional. And uh, they cannot be taken out of Euclidean time. They can only make sense in this four dimensional Euclidean space time. The monopoles can be taken out and put in the pocket. Uh, it's a particle, yes? It's a three dimensional object, it's a particle. It, so monopoles can exist both in Euclid and Minkowski description. This guy, yellow guys are semi-classical but they're pure Euclidean objects. Yes. Okay, let me make sure one, just one. Do you, Dion, let, let's just talk about a monopole in four dimensions space time. It's a monopole zero, zero, uh, zero D on the endpoints of a total line, right? Agree? The, the monopole is the endpoint of a magnetic line operator, the total line. Yeah, so, yes, so, I so, so. Yes. So, so my point here is that when you say instant monopole or instant Dion layer, do you want to attach the monopole to? Uh, no, it's a, it, it's it's a, a separate wall? solution. It's a separate solution. I see. Uh, is it, when and, you say separate you will solution, see, you will see the theory of this would be semi classical and theory of monopoles, which I will not describe to uh, speak today, uh, is actually some uh, quantum mechanics of this. So, monopoles are really particles, and that would be quantum mechanics of them. If, if we want to describe them here, it is just statistical sum with integral over collective variables. I, I think maybe I can phrase the question, like the left-hand side picture, the monopole is endpoint of a Dirac string in, in that case, right? Yes. So is a dion this, layer- This you, guy's is a dion also- layer, Is a dion uh, layer you want to attach to some uh, dionic line operator, or, or do you want to separate the left from a line operator? Yeah. So Instant the monopole, doesn't require, Instant okay. doesn't require line operator, but dion is the endpoint yeah. of line operator. And yes. what I was asking the dimensionality of these objects, make sure that yeah, these are interesting. Let me say in terms of right. quantum numbers. So instanton has topological charge, to integral GG dual. Let's find this second chunk class, C2. Second chunk class. The, uh, and and it, uh, its constituent happen to be monopoles, so they have also magnetic charges. That's why they are connected by uh, these uh, lines. But they also have singular electric, uh, which we may, may or may not call electric charge. They are self-dual, electric and magnetic equal. Yes. They are different from Dirac monopoles, which are pure magnetic. Yes, I agree. But, so, but, so they do have magnetic charge and Dirac string, but they have more. They have also topological charge and electric charge in quotation marks. They are self-dual. The, uh, the monopoles are just magnetic, yes? Yes, uh, maybe, let me. Because I think it's important even the first time, maybe many mathematicians or other people will get lost. Is the instant on dion layer is just some combination of solution for 0D instant on and the 0D dion, no, uh, which is the end point no, no. of a dion line, it, or is it a no. separate solution? It's a separate solution. Oh, and it has different asymptotics at large distances, which is most important. I see. 
but, it but then go also, to zero. It doesn't go to zero at large distances from a solution. So, so what's the topological maybe corner number or you know like a maybe turn class characteristic class or some? Yes, it has system. well. Th this is the tricky thing. It has topological charge, integral GG dual, but it's not integer. It's not integer because it is not separated from two others. They together have topological charge one, but they have some particular fraction of that one. Okay, Dep is, that, is that just something solved from the twist boundary condition like to who? Type of a, no, no, it no. is no, it is it is boundary condition that a naught is constant with particular value. Yeah, yeah I will I, come to this. Okay, this I'm, is just okay, my picture. Fine, thanks, thank you. So this is uh, what we call topological landscape. The horizontal line is Chern Simon's number, and when it is integer, uh, these lines go to zero. The field become pure gauge, and we simply have a pure gauge field with zero energy but uh, these gauges are topologically different. So I forgot the mathematical classification of that. It, it's a 3D. Now, uh, if we ask a question, uh, this, and we call them valleys, uh, they're separated by states with finite energy. So if we interested in states which have minimal energy, but fixed size and fixed value of Chern-Simons number, then we have these lines, which we call Svalerov path. There's a mountain separating the valleys. Instanton is a tunneling process between uh, one valley to the next. It corresponds to energy zero and it's pure tunneling. That's why it's a Cridian solution. Uh, Svaleron itself historically uh, was just a configuration on the top of the mountain. If you disturb it, it's pure magnetic static configuration of magnetic field, which solves the Amiel's equation. Uh, and uh, if you perturb it, it can roll down the mountain, and that's called Svaleron explosion. So uh, we also have this green stuff, which is a path, uh, which is called uh, force tunneling. So we can go to a particular state on the slope, to which it then explode and rolls down. All of it, um, so all of that have uh, analytic solutions and uh, this is not well, very well known. So I will uh, say a little bit how we get there. Excuse me, yes. make sure. is that figure you show the horizontal axis is a Euclidean time or some, what's, what's the label? The horizontal axis in Chair Simon's number, it is zero, what one, is two. Right. So there are these ridges of mountains identical. Now, moving along the horizontal axis means that we change our Simon's number and Chen Simon's number is, uh, is uh, connected uh, by anomaly to some axial charge of fermions, etc. So each time uh, we go from one valley to another, important things happen in the fermions sector. And uh, that is a kind of a general thing. Now, how we get this uh, uh, mountain, shape of the mountain? So historically, one uh, we, we did it in three different ways. I'll quickly tell you all three. Uh, number one is that we go from solutions which have previous history and are four-dimensional solutions, which are instant and anti-instanton configurations. So if you look here, this is an instanton, this is anti-instanton, this is separation in time. Uh, suppose the separation is large. If it is large, they depend on solutions, extrema of the action, of, of the theory. Now, uh, if they are at finite distance, and we, uh, we can go from uh, separating guys to closer, closer, and closer. So we can do along the uh, gradient line, and it was uh, in this field, it was called streamline configurations. It's a young mills equation with some particular right hand side. And this is uh, what in mathematics is called Riefschitz Timbals. Yeah, there should be H here. Uh, it is uh, like you have this uh, landscape, and uh, from a pass between the two valleys, there is 
there are rivers going to both sides. This is this uh, uh, set of configurations. Now you see here it is self-dual, electric and magnetic fields are equal. Here it is anti-self-dual, electric and magnetic field are opposite. If the picture is completely symmetric, then electric field is odd in time. And so on this intermediate three-dimensional uh, plane, uh, it would be zero electric field and would be pure magnetic configuration. So in this pure magnetic configuration, what's the meaning of pure magnetic configuration? The meaning is that it is, um, we call it either unitarity card, but might be simpler to remind that in quantum mechanics, there are so-called turning points when momentum is zero. And here is uh, electric field is also playing the role of momentum. So this is a configuration where evolution of the system grows out of Euclidean part of the trajectory to Minkowski space. So this object can explode in Minkowski. And uh, this is, but this object is pure magnetic object. Now, uh, uh, solution of this uh, uh, streamline equation was found and uh, we can use it and then we can calculate as a function of this capital T, uh, the energy of the state and its Gem Simons number and that generate plots like this, where we can see that, uh, so this correspond to very far instanton and anti instanton. There is practically nothing here, no energy, no Gem Simons number. If they start going toward each other, we see this thing, it reaches Chen Simon's number half, and then it kind of symmetrically continues. So this is uh, the shape of the mountain, and each this point is some particular magnetic configuration. The other way uh, how we do it is just constrained immunization. Uh, that was done by Tim Ostrowski, who was my student at the time, 20 years ago. And uh, you simply write the uh, energy of your next field, three-dimensional, which means integral magnetic field score, plus uh, Lagrange multiplier times Chen Simon's number and Lagrange multiplier times this ratio, which give you root mean square radius because it is necessary to fix the radius and Chen Simon's number. After that, we get solution and solution is parametrically can be read from this line. So you see this kappa as a function of kappa, you get energy and change Simon's number. Together they give this plot. And you see kappa equals zero, correspond the middle. It gives change Simon's number a half and uh, energy three pi squared or which is squared rho. Rho is the size. So this is three pi squared. Oh, excuse me, may I ask again? Sorry, yes. in case if I don't ask, I will get lost. So I suppose the 4D instant number uh, is, uh, as I know, is integral of the space time will be quantized or fractionally quantized, depends yes. on your normalization. But now your, your previous slide says something about the 4D instant number to 3D, maybe transcendence number, no. but your transcendence, no, no, you no. have this reduction. No, 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 this 4D. is important. Yes, what do you ask? This is three dimensional transcendence number, yes? Mm -hmm. And, Instant on this transition. So integral of GG dual is a change in Chen Simon's number between this and this. It's a tunneling from one valley to another. The usual topological charge, which is quantized to one, right, for the instant on minus one for that, is a difference of Chen Simon's numbers here and here, yes, initial and final. In other words, there, right. there is some topological current of which Chen Simon's number is a zero component, and the versions of that uh, current is GG dual. So, okay. so that is the connection between them. Yes? Okay. The instance on this is a process describing tunneling. These are static configurations uh, describing uh, so minimal energy states or potential, you might call it. Uh, as a function of Simon's number. Yes. Yeah. In other words, you can either tunnel through the mountain or go up the mountain and then down, or you can tunnel part of the mountain and then go down. All these processes can be described, yes? No problem. And they, and they may happen, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I go 
describe two. I quickly mentioned the third. The third is from uh, Ismail Zahir and myself. You see it's again 20 years ago. So there is some four-dimensional spherical solution in Euclidean uh, space-time to which we do off-center conformal transformation. This is kind of standard in mathematical physics. Young Mills equation is conformal in classical Mills equation. And you can uh, generate new solutions by conformal transformation. So we make it. And then second step is continuation to Minkowski. After that, you have rather complicated solution which describes explosion of a spiral. It starts as a static bomb, magnetic, and then it goes into expanding wave, spherical wave of gauge field. Now, because during this process, we change John Simon's number, uh, the resulting thing, uh, the solar run explosion, result in certain uh, changes in fermionic sector. So uh, we, we have up, down, and strange quarks in QCD and free anti-quarks, and they have particular polarization in this process. They are created. So we have created six units of axial charge. What exactly that means uh, and how to see it is separate discussion. In electroweak theory, where we also have instant transphalerons and all this uh, business, the explosion of sphaleron uh, produce uh, 12 fermions, nine quarks and three leptons. So it really violates baryon uh, number and lepton number. Okay. Now an important bonus of, of this is uh, that uh, we have a zero mode, uh, that, that we have also Dirac equation for massless fermion, and therefore if we have the solution of Young Mills equation, we have solution of Dirac equation in that field. And that describe how this all these uh, fermions are produced with the wave functions and spectrum, etc. Okay, so I only want to say about this process that uh, electroweak phalerons have a mass of 8.5 TeV. That's a big mass. It's still less than energy available at LHC. But so, of course, uh, we are sure that not a single event producing this object happened. Barrier number was not violated and the probability to do it is negligible. However, uh, QCD spherons uh, are uh, can be produced. We recently wrote a paper about it. Some efforts are going on at LHC, at CERN, and in Brookhaven. And we, there was even some clusters, which we think are the QCD spherons, but that needs to be proven. Okay, I quick up because it very low, slow start. So instant ensemble in vacuum, I should start explaining uh, or reminding what is chiral symmetries and what happened with them. So that uh, started 60 years ago with this paper of Nambu and Yonel Azimia, who introduced hypothetical four Fermi interaction. So this pi and sigma, these brackets, the square of have four quarks and uh, it's similar like uh, interaction in superconductor, but in superconductor, if, if G is very uh, small, you can get a gap, far better is small G. However, in, on, in vacuum, you also can get a gap of fermion mass, but only at finite G. That was the main result. And uh, the result was that uh, as in superconductor, you get Goldstone mode, uh, here you get Goldstone mode, pi, so sigma get a wave and pi and become massless Goldstone mode. That is what they explained. Now in 70s, when uh, this uh, beloved Polyakov, Schwarz, Tupkin, Polyakov discovered and Tov discovered fermionic zero modes and formulated his Lagrangian, schematically his Lagrangian look like this. We have three light quarks and three anti-quarks or six fermion operators. You can reduce it uh, to four fermion and you can then write it in this form. And you see that uh, the half of this Lagrangian is the same as Nambu pre previewed, but then there is another half which have another combinations. 
And what is important is that here is a minus. Uh, the, chiral, the usual chiral symmetry rotation is, is between pi and Zen sigmas and between these two. So S, S, U, and F chiral symmetry is not broken, but U1 chiral symmetry is broken. So in other words, these four fields are not identical because of this minus sign. And that is why there is a particle called eta prime, and there is a particle, this one also. These guys have a mass, large mass, like a nucleon, about one GV, while this guy is practically massless. So here is a repulsion, here is attraction. Repulsion make this particle heavy, attraction uh, break vacuum and make it superconducting with the condensate. Now in 80s, I came up with the instant liquid model, which says that this instant don't exist it, in certain density and they have certain size. And then their interactions create a condensate and correlation functions of the vacuum, et cetera, et cetera. So that created big phenomenology and uh, also calculation of this statistical ensemble which I wouldn't describe. I just say that on the other hand, during this time, we had this lattice calculations, which describe uh, ensemble of gauge fields. And if you plot distributions, if you smoothen them enough and plot distribution of topological charge, so you see this red and green are positive and negative. This is how it looks like. And this roughly this instant on liquid. So this object are interacting strongly, they're not ideal gas, and they together create a quark condensate. So um, one thing which is important is also that uh, this uh, for Fermi uh, operator create uh, particular important interactions. And uh, this is a roughly a picture of a pion. So, two quarks travel and then they tunnel together from this tunnel. Now this tunnel is not like the tunnel in Boston to which uh, uh, you guys in Harvard uh, accustomed to. This is like a tunnel between England and France because everyone who was right-handed because left-handed and vice versa. So they change chirality on the line. In the nuclear, there is also intense tunneling happens, but this is uh, two quarks enter, not quark, anti-quark. And uh, this di-quark is a cousin of the pion. It's not massless, but it is very deeply bound. So that's the picture. And maybe I skip this. And uh, there are some uh, more recent work about importance of this type of interaction, which is of topological origin. In the... Uh, main application of which I will describe one. Now, uh, excuse me, may yes. I ask? Uh, maybe you are quick about explaining that part, but I, I, don't, I don't fully get it. Because the spelling is actually a solution in the Euclidean uh, 40 space time. Well, right, you it's mentioned three dimensional, that... right? Three dimensional magnetic object. So it's a solution of three dimensional this equation. Uh, but I mean, in the 40 space time. Right, for the Euclidean space time. And, and without, without time, it's a static. It, it's, it's like monopole, it's, except monopole has radial fields, but this have, it, it doesn't have singularity or magnetic charge, but it is a solution of three dimensional static uh, Young means equation. Yes, I, I mean the Euclidean, Euclidean solution, right? Well, okay. It's static, it. it's time independent. So you can say either Euclidean or, or not, it doesn't depend on time. The explosion of it is Minkowskian solution. So it's a literally static bomb, which can explode. But I think my, okay. My, my point is that uh, I suppose these are sub from Euclidean signature, but I think you mentioned something about the yes, exper I, we, experimental signature and continuation to Minkowski. I wasn't sure how do you, uh, maybe yeah, just so out of my knowledge. Right, this how is do you four dimensional detect? Euclidean space. Here are extrema of four dimensional. This is solution of Young Mills. There's a dual, et cetera, et cetera. On this plane, T equals zero, 
It's three dimensions. Here you have pure magnetic solution. It's static. It has no time. It is at time zero. Yes. In other words, maybe it is again we return here. This is a process. It goes from here to here. It's time dependent, instant, on, and it is four dimensionally symmetric in some sense, right? It's a process, history, Euclidean, under the barrier. This guy, and actually any of this uh, point, is a static three dimensional solution, which uh, is pure magnetic. If it starts moving, it generates electric field. Is it understandable? Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully the, 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 the correspondent experimental signature that you mentioned to detail this process. Yes. Uh, so the process- about the continuation to Minkowski, uh, that part, I'm not sure. Yes, the okay. So, so in an experiment, it looks like this, that the tunnels to the side of that mountain create some cluster of certain energy, which then decays, explodes into, and uh, there are certain, uh, since it has particular uh, uh, combination of quarks or chiral charge, etc., we are thinking about how we separate it. And we think these few GeV clusters are these holerons. Oops, now I'm stuck. Now I return to four dimensional vacuum, yes? And I speak about ensemble of instantons. Now again, what is this? I don't understand it. I see. This is how it looks like. This is four dimensional picture, yes? Of distribution of topological charge. So these objects are instantons and anti-instantons. Together they make this instant liquid, yes? This is what we study. And in this uh, model, we you can calculate correlation functions. Maybe I go to correlation functions. There is this striking uh, feature. So what are correlation functions? It's a correlator of two operators in vacuum average. Uh, in condensed matter physics, people have lots of correlation function as well. Okay. Now, um, here is, so in uh, the 90s, I wrote a paper in review of quantum physics, clarifying all this correlation function with different quantum numbers. And they can be calculated directly from experiments. So this is E plus E minus annihilation into all hadrons. This is spectral density, as it is called. Integral, the spectral density can be uh, written as a function of distance, it can be continued to Euclid, and it gives these curves. So, so all of this is experimental, you might say. And the interesting thing is that if this vector, this is a ratio of correlation function to massless quark loop, or just square for propagator of a massless quark, it's some normalization. So in this normalization, this uh, function is close to one that tell you that all corrections to free propagation of quarks are absent up to large distances. And these are the channels in which instantons do not operate. Now, if, the, if there are, because these are vector currents with gamma mu, here are pseudoscalar current with gamma five. In this channel, uh, instantons operate and we have uh, say a distance one and a half Fermi. Here we have effect of the order 20%. Here we have effect of the order of two orders of magnitude. So there were a direct evidence that uh, in some sense in its correlation function, there is huge difference between channels with instant correction and without instant correction. That was uh, shown by uh, also studied in the lattice, and it was indeed showed. In particular, let me compare this one. So you may take lattice, and on the lattice, you calculate correlation function. Then you smooth up, and 99.9% .9 of the action is gone. All gluons disappear. What is left is a picture which I showed before, just instantons. The extrema 
so they cannot disappear and smoothen it. Then in that, that's what I call instant liquid. In that instant liquid, you again calculate the same correlation function, and this is what you get. This is in, in the other channel. So basically, uh, these correlation functions were dominated by instant loss. Now I want to tell you a little bit uh, in some modern uh, model building related to ADS-CFT and holography. So first, uh, there is this theory and four times supersymmetric and meals. And uh, it has this uh, idea CFT correspondence. So this is the bulk. This is four dimensional, uh, four dimensional boundary and the rest is the bulk. So this coordinate to the right is holographic coordinate, fifth coordinate. And the space is ADS5. Now, any object in the bulk have hologram on the boundary. And this is how we see in our gauge theory world, this object. So if we start from an object, which is just point like a little speck of dust, let's say, uh, it interact with uh, scalar fields, which exist in uh, this uh, bulk theory, uh, dilaton and axiom, and uh, give image a hologram for this operator, g squared and ggd. And they have this four. X is uh, our four coordinates there, and z is a distance from this. Now, this is precisely the instant, instant on distribution of the fields. Now, a point like speck without indices cannot interact with gravitons by gravity with G mean because it has no directions. And indeed, instantons have no stress tensor. So basically, in this theory, instantons are holograms of a point like dust particle in the bulk. The distribution, this is according to metrical ADS5, this is a volume minimum. And instanton density have exactly this factor. In this theory, uh, action doesn't depend on, um, on, on the row, on size. So it doesn't matter, there's E minus S, but it doesn't depend on that. So in other words, in, in pure n equal flow theory, we have homogeneous distribution of uh, the X over the volume of the ADS5. This is how instant on ensemble look like uh, n equal flow, holographic flow. Now, maybe I uh, need to tell you that this is a coupling constant and the coupling constant have this term, this perturbative term, and this B, this is a synthetic free term. It's a function of scale A, which is some momentum scale. The momentum scale go large, logarithm go large, coupling goes small. And these are non-perturbative correction due to instantons. And in particular, I just immediately mentioned uh, n equal to super angles, where we have Zeber Newton exact answer. And in this Zeber Newton answer, instead of this integral, we have exact uh, for elliptic uh, function, which gives dependence. And expansion of this function in powers of one over e of these terms. And uh, these are expansion in instantons, one instanton power four, and this k is how many instantons are. And uh, this uh, was calculated explicitly and uh, Nikita Nikrasov calculated all this sequence, which reproduced cyber Newton solution. So what is important is that uh, interplay of this instanton effect, either in this form or in this cyber Newton form, uh, have opposite sign to this and if, you, if the right-hand side have zero, that means at that point, G goes to infinity. And that is what indeed happened in Zyber-Newton. There are two singular points. So in other words, instanton generate rapid change in coupling. So the instantons exist of particular size. And when the scale passes this size, uh, the coupling jumps. The other thing is what happened with instance if you go from small number of colors 
203, which we normally study, to large. Uh, as Witten pointed out, uh, because in this uh, action is of the order of NC and becomes very large, so small size instantons disappear. Any number smaller than one in infinite power goes to zero, but one in infinite power go to one. So what happened is that the instant distribution like this, uh, which we get from our ensemble at large n become thinner and thinner and become delta function at large n. So this is the holographic picture now uh, of uh, holographic QCD like model uh, with the instantons. So this is holographic coordinate Z z equals zero is again the boundary where the gauge theory lives. If you go in this direction, uh, in ADS CFT, in the original ADS5, it's ADS5 all the way, and the interaction between quarks is colonic, colombic. That it is still done by string theory, but these strings can go arbitrary far into the infrared as Maldacena did in his first paper. Now, if there is a different geometry, if there is some uh, dilaton background, which doesn't allow strings to go beyond certain uh, uh, Z, called confining wall, that generate a theory in which uh, interaction of fermions is uh, linear in, in distance, confining one. So here is this Z that's, so Z is size of the instanton. So all the instantons are located on this wall and interact among themselves. And what happens is that uh, the effective coupling, lambda Toft coupling, uh, is weak on one side of the wall and it jumps to some large value on the other side of the wall. So the instanton ensemble in this large limit is uh, reduced to this wall. Instead of occupying the whole space, they just locate it at particular uh, distance from the boundary. That's a, a kind of holographic model of the instant ensemble. Now I see that I have really limited uh, uh, time, so I will probably uh, sk skip. Probably I skip this. Yes, I really. So pity, but I need to skip it. It's not its particular application. And I want to say about this instant dyons and instant monopoles. Because, so the first thing which uh, needs to be explained is this. This is a setting of finite temperature. This uh, horizontal line is X, X, Y, Z, free spatial coordinate. The vertical is time. That's a Euclidean time and it's compactified to a circle. And it has certain uh, circumference, h bar over temperature. So if temperature go higher, this become shorter, right? Now, if we take integral a mu dx mu, an exponent, path exponent over this red line, which connect the points because it is on the circle, it's basically torus. So this is goes around the torus and it's a periodic circle. So it is gauge invariant operator. So in this case, it was introduced by Polyakov called Polyakov line, this operator. And in mathematics, that's holonomy. That's integral around non-contractable cycle. So because uh, it, these are generators of uh, color group, SU3, uh, because this is a Hermitian, exponent of it is unitary, and uh, vacuum expectation value of this operator, we can write in diagonal form with some phases. For example, in SC3, we have three of these phases, me one, me two, me three. We can uh, plot them to visualize as three points on a circle. These are eigenvalues of this P. So in other words, there are particular value of this A naught. This is done around time axis, so mu is zero. And uh, the fact that uh, this quantity 
is not zero, its average means that A naught is, is not zero. So this is, uh, uh, in this setting, in this background, everything is in a con field of constant A naught. And the value of this A naught is related to this means. Now, uh, this is how average value of this operator depend on temperature. So this is pure gauge theory without quarks. And you see that at high temperature, uh, its average is close to one. One means that this field is zero. It's a trivial result. So there is no field in node. But then in this interval between one and three TC, it's not zero. And then it goes to this about 0.4 and jump to zero. This is first order confinement transition or the, the confinement transition. Now, average of this thing has a meaning of free energy of a fermion, of infinitely heavy fermion move here. And zero means that this free energy is infinite. That's called confinement. There are no fermions in the spectrum. And if it is finite, like here, that's the confined phase or quartzian plasma. So this is transition between confined and the confined uh, phases of the theory. This is pure gauge. If we add light quarks, uh, this part basically does not change. But instead of a jump from 0.4 to 0, we see that there is a smooth transition basically from 0.4 to zero. And uh, now it is not zero, but a small. So it means that quarks have finite free energy per quark, but very large because it's close to zero. Uh, I will not describe why it is. Let's take it as a fact. So uh, we see that uh, our uh, fields are sitting in constant A node background. So this guy, Pierre Van Bal, who unfortunately no longer with us now, uh, was thinking about how to find instant solution in such a way that at large distances it goes to constant A node. And he found such solution. With uh, such surprise, he found out that uh, you have three monopoles connected with the rack string, three if, if there are three colors. And uh, if you calculate action, you just see three bumps because you don't see the Dirac string. But if you look at the solution, you see the Dirac string. So that was this uh, instant on dyons. The formulas are very complicated. And uh, Nevertheless, it's just uh, indeed a solution. Uh, it was seen on the lattice, maybe I skip this, and just go to our recent paper where we can see these objects directly from lattice. Uh, so how we see it? Uh, some lattice collaboration which have gauge configurations, uh, which cost a lot of money, uh, gave us these configurations. And we selected, for example, uh, this are very costly thing because it has so-called domain wall fermions, which have nearly exact chiral symmetry, which means quarks are very, very light and chiral symmetry is nearly exact. So if we select configuration, which is just a four dimensional box, with total topological charge one, uh, theorem says that they should have one, exactly one Dirac zero mode. If you put this field in Dirac equation, it should have one exactly zero mode. So we look for zero mode. We indeed found one zero mode with machine accuracy. It's topological, it's uh, eigenvalue Dirac eigenvalue is zero. And this is how it looked like. Now you see here three different so in other words, this is how the, one of the states in a quark condensate in a vacuum look like as fermions see them. This is density of quarks in that state. It's under eigenvector 
in four dimensions. Now, if you have ordinary quarks, which are fermions, you see this red peak. However, by changing uh, periodicity condition on uh, Matsubara circle, uh, you can actually force zero mode uh, jumping from one type of dions to the other type of dions. So we can see, in other words, all three of them. Mathematically speaking, uh, what happens is that for each type of dions, there is a solution with zero right hand side or zero eigenvalue, but uh, only for one of them, they're normalizable and uh, good. So if you change this boundary condition, then it, uh, the solution jumps from one to another and to the third. That is all technical, you may say. And the thing is that we see these objects and we see it is a superposition of some uh, objects and each of them very accurately uh, agree with analytic formulas for solution of the Dirac equation in the field of one dial. So, so we can see them. We can also study the ensemble. How they interact, I don't have time to tell you. And I just um, tell you the result. So we start with the SU2 group. In the SU2 group, we have two of these red dots, which correspond to this uh, eigenvalues of polycode line. And uh, the formulas are such that the action, there are two types of dye, and they have action proportional to this fraction called nu and this fraction of a circle, which we call nu bar, one minus nu. And we call them two different types. So when these uh, red dots would be here and here, they would be the same. At very high temperature, they move to zero to the right hand side. So this type become very light and this become the whole circle. The sum of masses, as we call it, of uh, all dions, all types of dions are one. So the total mass is the action of the instant. That's kind of technical. From a uh, point of view of statistical mechanics, in this theory, we have four objects and they have magnetic charges plus and minus one. They have Euclidean electric charges plus minus one, and they interact with each other. So it is kind of a double plasma uh, of this object interacting uh, in uh, this way. One can solve statistical mechanics of it and see what happens. So this is uh, free energy as a function of this new. And what you see here that at small density, which is this brown curve, the minimum is here, and then it moves smoothly to one half. And after one half, it stay at one half. So in other words, it's a second order transition. For SE3, we see first order transition, there is minimum and jumping to another minimum. This is what a uh, Polyakov line is calculated. So there are two phases. In one phase, Polyakov line is zero, and these three dots are in exactly symmetric uh, situation. And then they start moving to the right. The dions become non-equal and it jumps to this point four and then increases. This is exactly what is seen on the lattice. This is this red curve. Not exactly, of course, there are some reason for this discrepancy, but it's very close. So in other words, the confinement transition in the C3 H theory is first order with a particular jump. And the reason for that transition on the language of instant dying is uh, that the, for symmetry reason, they prefer configuration when all three types are equal masses. And uh, that's what happened if they have large density. So once again, high temperature correspond to due to asymptotic freedom, small charge. Uh, action of the instant and dying is proportional to one over G squared coupling. So it's a large, at large temperature, this action is large and you have dilute 
ensemble, E minus action is small. So here is the dilute system, here is dense system. If they become dense enough, they start dominating the system and they prefer to be uh, equal. And that is this uh, jump in the language of this instant. Now we can go on. I don't have time for information. Uh, and describe chiral symmetry breaking. So each fermion can jump between instant and anti-instant. There are zero modes of this one and this one. But if there is a superposition of two, the two zero modes are split, which you may say can be written as a molecule. If you have many of them, then a quark in a can make this larger loops. The fermionic determinant, which give the weight of configuration, can be written in some of the diagrams like this. And the question is whether it's dominated by this type, and that is true at small density, or this type with very long paths, which is true at large density. So this is spectrum of Dirac eigenvalues at low density and high density. At low density, there are no small eigenvalues. This molecules have some eigenvalues of order one. However, if you have high density, this is how spectrum look like. And in the infinite box limit, this gap disappears. I have no time to describe it. And it becomes continuous all the way to zero. So we have a transition which condensed matter theorists would call uh, insulator to conductor transition. Instantons can be seen as atoms and zero mode as a bound state. So if you have a very dense system of atoms, it becomes metallic. That, uh, and your electron, which is here, quarks, can propagate far. That's uh, basically what happens. And uh, we see that happen. I don't have time for this. And I'm just saying that uh, you can play different games with the formation uh, of the QCD. Uh, giving different boundary condition to quarks, and uh, that changes uh, phase transition quite significantly. This. So I'm now uh, hour and five minutes, so probably I don't have time. Sure. What? What do you no, think? The, the talk is ninety minutes, so you still still have time. Okay. So then I explain the, the last thing, which is this very interesting, a uh, general thing which is called Poisson duality. Now Poisson himself, of course, has no relation to any of it. Uh, Poisson invented a formula where a sum of some integer, function of some integer, can be written as a sum of Fourier transform of that function with some other integer. And that formula was used by these authors, Nick Dory, in particularly, uh, who did the following. They take n equal four second elements. This is the, the simplest theory, so to say. It is conformal, charge doesn't run. He put it on our three-dimensional space and circle, which is the same as I just described in temperature, but uh, he conserved supersymmetry, so fermions have also periodic value. These are all details. So uh, this theory, as you know, have four gluinas and four supersymmetries and six scalars. Now, if you theory have scalars, there are toft polycob monopole solutions. So he has some classical monopoles and he can calculate in terms of monopoles and their motion, uh, the partition function of this theory at final temperature. It, I call it temperature, although this boundary condition on a circle is a little different. Now, this theory also have this instant on dance. So you can uh, go and calculate in terms of instant dance, and he get two very different formulas. He couldn't sum it to the end, but he noticed that the two formulas are related by this Poisson duality. So it means you should either use this language or that language and not mix them together. So uh, I will show one simple example, which we found in this paper uh, three years ago, which shows how it works in this simple example. So example is just a particle in a circle, quantum particle in a circle. 
at finite temperature. So again, there are two circles. One is uh, circle I, a location on this circle, this angle. And the other circle is tau. Tau is also a circle with circumference, this Matsubara circumference. So one approach, which we call Hamiltonian, is you take a Hamiltonian of that system and diagonalize. The states are given by orbital momentum. And this is just Boltzmann factor. You have L squared over two momentum of inertia divided by temperature. And if you add a flux for that circle, that give you this Aronov bomb phase omega. So Z is function of temperature and omega. Now you see that uh, at high temperature, this can, at low temperature, it converges very well because there are a small number of excitations. And also it's each and every term in this sum of angular momentum is periodic in omega. So that's Hamiltonian approach. You have Hamiltonian states and you sum with the Boltzmann factor. The other approach is Lagrangian approach. You consider classical paths, which make N rotation uh, mapping the path maps to Matsubara time and make N rotations. So this is classical path. You can calculate its contribution of each of them that are topologically distinct with different N. Uh, to partition function, you get this formula. So now notice the temperature is upstairs. So at high temperature, this is beta convergent. And now omega sit here together with this n. So if you sum over all n, it is still periodic function of omega, individual terms are not. However, if you sum them, you get the same answer. This is some elliptic theta function. And if you plot them from this sum and that sum, you get the same curves. So there, you can have Hamilton approach or Lagrangian approach to this problem, which give two very different uh, partition sums. But if you sum them up, they're the same. That's a, a good lesson. And this is how it looks like in this Nick Dory case. In this case, like in this case here, it is quadratic function of L. So it's Gaussian, and its Fourier transform is this periodic Gaussian. Now, this is the famous uh, Poisson formula. Yes. So famous Poisson formula is uh, that uh, this sum equal that sum, and the tilde means Fourier transform. In the previous two examples, uh, this function was Gaussian. So one is Gaussian, the other is periodic Gaussian Fourier transform. Uh, and uh, this is how it worked. Now, if we go to QCD and we have this instant on dials, we can calculate the partition function in this instant on language. And it looks like this. It's a sum of n, but instead of square of that bracket, you have just modulus. So the function which we want to do for your transform is exponent of modulus x. Of course, it's Fourier transform we can calculate and it is one over uh, some coefficients. So it has this form. In other words, we try to using this Poisson formula to, rep to rewrite our instant of partition function in the other form, which looks like a monopole partition function. So we can do it was using the formula. So does it make sense? The answer is it does make sense. So that, what is the action? It's S of Q. Uh, first of all, who is Q? Q is a new integer number. Now, when you have monopole, it is pure magnetic. If monopole start moving, it generate electric field. Uh, if monopole start rotating around itself, it's also generate electric field. That was found by Trulezi many years ago. So this Q over which we sum is the electric charge of the rotating monopoles. So this is sum of rotating states of a monopole, similar to example which I just gave. And the action here as Q has this form. Now this is a rather unusual form. Why? 
This is a, a weak coupling. This is a large quantity. But instead of having coupling in front of the action, as classical solutions always have, they have it in the log. That's because this function is different function. If function would be Gaussian, it would be the usual uh, action like Nick Dory had. So in his case, it will tell you that monopoles are semi-classical. The action is of the order one over G squared. This object is not semi-classical. So does this formula make sense? It turns out it does. So here are the data about monopole density from a lattice as a function of temperature. This is some curve. And it is not inverse power of temperature as instant undirance and all other classical, some classical object have. Now, once again, the exponent of minus s is the weight of our partition function. If action of the object is one over g squared, because it's solution of Young-Yang's equation, and it has uh, this form always. Asymptotic freedom tells us that one over g squared translates to log of scale, in this case, temperature. So you have exponent of something times log, exponent and log cancels, and we have inverse power of temperature. So instant ions have that temperature dependence, instantons have such density dependence, any classical solution should, but monopoles do not. They have inverse power of log T instead of T. Somehow this result was known for quite some time and uh, it, it was puzzling and nobody paid attention to it. So now we kind of have resolution to it. It explained in terms of this. So our so-called so, so monopole partition function correspond to the data when monopoles are extracted on the lattice. How they're extracted? You get a little uh, three-dimensional cube and uh, its surface is Gaussian surface. So if there is a flux of magnetic field through it, uh, you declare that there is a magnetic charge inside and that is how you find these monopoles. Uh, the density is physical in terms of scaling, etc., and uh, this is the behavior. So, uh, so the big realization is that uh, yes, there are these monopoles. It is correct that they're not quasi-classical, semi-classical. The action is like this, and the density depends on temperature differently. So that shows that, that one, and uh, this Poisson duality tell you that I can either study TA in terms of monopoles or instant undirance. Doing it in terms of monopoles is difficult for two reasons. Once, it is not semi-classical object. We don't have an analytic solution for a monopole. We only rely on some procedure on lattice with Gaussian surface, which tell you there is monopole and then they can follow the paths of the monopoles, study the interaction and things like this. And in order to, st to do statistical mechanics of monopoles, we need to do path integrals of the, all of them. And we actually did that too and uh, study uh, a condensation of monopoles. It is different somewhat from a condensation in uh, ordinary gases because monopoles have Coulomb interaction. But nevertheless, they a condense. Yes, there is raised hand. A question. Just make sure you are saying monopole a lot of time, but not sure whether you even space by the gauge group. And what, what monopole are we talking now? Is it some SU3? Yeah, it is SU3 and, and there are, so the monopoles are kind of SU2 beasts. So SU3 have two diagonal subgroup. Yes, there is, uh, how it is called, the maximal abelian subgroups, right? So on the diagonal, in other words, you can have SU212 and SU223. So this monopoles, so to say we have, um, two diagonal subgroups, and that means we have two U1s as subgroups of SU3. So we have this monopoles, and there are two types of magnetic charges according to each SU2 subgroup. But then you consider abandonized. 
a billion theory, not the the no no the, the it, is, it is pure it is QCD or gauge theory, as you free gauge theory. I'm saying that uh, um, Yeah, so, so inside the SU3, you, inside the SU3, you can define by some uh, projection two abelian subgroups. And according to this uh, abelian subgroups, uh, there are, so to say, two electrodynamics and the monopole has uh, and everything else will have particular quantum numbers according to that. So there are two types of uh, monopoles in SU3. Let's, let's go back to SU2, for example. In SU2, we have just one monopole. Right, but, but, but there's also another thing is that uh, I think for, are you consider pure young mills without fermions or you, yeah, you have here, fermions? Here, for example, pure young mills. These, these data are from uh, these guys. Uh, Alexander and Dele, it is pure as you free in But then, the but then I, I think, uh, sorry, the big one knows, but I think multiple in that case will be the endpoint of a two line, but there's no dynamical two line in SU2 or SU3, Yamil know, theory. They can only as much as a background, which is not really introduced in the passing the goal, right? You can only, right. right. You, you, so, so we just, don't just have correct, solutions for them, yes? Just clarify the Wilson line is dynamical but the Tohu line is not, it, it can only be introduced as a background, which will introduce, depends on, as a probe, right? So so I, I, I'm i not sure what's the multiple here, or we consider to do the passing of the two. The partition function is right. Yes, I, okay. I'm saying for a long time, we were not sure what they are. And uh, we don't have solution, yes? which is analytic solution and Mills equation or something like this. Why? Because uh, the famous Toft monopole, the Toft Polyakov monopole is not in QCD, it is in George Glacial model. In George Glacial model, there is a joint scalar, yes? And if this a joint scalar has vacuum expectation value, it shows the direction and everything is projected to that direction. And that somehow uh, make inside non-abelian group, the, so to say, longitudinal fields and transverse fields to that direction. So the monopole is a monopole in this abelian uh, subgroup of SU3. And this one is given by direction, which is given by the web of that scalar field. Yes. So I, yeah, okay. So, so I guess the way I take this is that actually you are studying the monopole, the uh, the two u one abelian subgroup of the gauge theory of the original S three. Right. It's not a, so, not a real S three theory. Otherwise, so you might say which abelian subgroup. Now I'm saying in George Glacial model, there is a spontaneous breaking of uh, gauge symmetry by this scalar field, which selects some direction, and then uh, you have. Uh, in that particular model, you have a photon and W, if you remember. So massive gauge fields and massless gauge fields. So this massless gauge field naturally selected and then it monopoles with the long range forces due to this massless part. Yes? So in Georgia Glacial model, it was completely clear what monopole was. Here, indeed, it is not clear what monopole. So they project to some particular um, direction, which they either select randomly or they uh, do so-called maximal abelian uh, subgroup, or they use this Polyakov line average, uh, which also uh, selects some particular direction in color space. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, the, the abelian nice. Abelian theory, there is monopole, yes. It, yes, it, in abelian the theory, theory, there would be monopole with long range. There is so this, yeah. so we still... need uh, out of SU3 select some abelian subgroup. And that is given by uh, 
some external object which has direction in color space, so to say. And uh, but I'm not sure how to interpret using yeah, this that's called, for the that's original. That's called a billion projection. So you need to select the gauge, do this abelian projection, and then you see uh, these objects. Thanks. So it, it is complicated and confusing story, yes? Nevertheless, uh, we see them, the density scales as physical object, they behave as physical object, their correlation function agree with just Coulomb interaction. So the monopoles and antimonopoles make uh, plasma, Coulomb plasma, basically. And uh, what exactly they are is, I repeat, so, uh, they are somewhat mysterious. They are obtained by some complicated procedure, including gauge fixing and projection to some subgroup. But uh, after that, they behave like physical particles. We can. Um, and yeah. and, and in particular, what they do, the most important thing, what they do at some temperature, which in this units is one, when the density is large enough, they both are condensed. They start moving in the same way as say, uh, helium atoms in super fluid phase. Uh, so we can detect both the condensation of them and that in exactly corresponds to TC. So we see there are monopoles, we didn't understand what they are. So now I'm saying, I still don't understand what they are in macroscopically, but by this trick, I construct a partition function, which I claim is their partition function. And they correctly describe uh, their density. On the other hand, the total sum of this equal to total sum of that. So if I do some classical theory with instantons, I suppose to get the same description as with these monopoles. They're dual to each other, okay? Yeah. That's basically all what I want to say about it. So I missed uh, lots of stuff in the middle, but uh, so be it. Let me repeat what, what I'm saying again. Now, gauge theory in four dimensions uh, with Euclidean space time have four dimensional symmetric solutions of Young Mills equation, and those are instant types and anti instant. Let this gauge theory, which simulate this, uh, find finite density of these objects. And it is rather uh, interacting liquid. So one can statistically study interaction between them, make a model, uh, do partition function, calculate correlation functions, and these correlation functions give masses of hadrons, which we know experimentally. We exp we, it explains which one are light, like primes, which one are heavy, like the prime, and many other things. We can use this uh, two and four Fermi vertex introduced by Toft as an interaction between quarks, and that is also seen in some other application. Now, Finite temperature theory is defined not also in four dimensions, but now it is R3 times a circle, and temperature is related to circumference of a circle. High temperature is a small circle. Small circle correspond to weak coupling. So quark-gluon plasma at high temperature is relatively simple, perturbative, but as the temperature goes down, the circle becomes larger. The density of this instantons or its constituents grows, and there are phase transitions. So one transition is to confined phase, and the other one, which has order parameter, the chiral condensate, is uh, a chiral transition. So there are this object called instant dyes or instant monopoles. These objects are uh, So dual, the fraction of the instanton 
but somehow uh, they have more quantum numbers that instanton itself. Instanton has one quantum number topological charge, which is integral gg dual. These instant ions have fractions of that, which together add to one. When you split instanton into three of them, for example, but each of them have magnetic charge and it also has what I call electric charge, which goes in quotation marks. Now, um, they're so dual, but they are fractions of the instant. Uh, they are all, each and every one of them uh, can solution and they together is a solution which was found by Pierre and Bob. Uh, they interact in a particular way. We can calculate it classically and we can calculate one group, quantum corrections to interaction, make a partition function, simulate on computer this ensemble of instantons. Typically we have of the order of 100, 200, 300 of them. Uh, and these ensembles explain the confinement and higher transition, the reproduced order of transition location of the transition. And also if we deform QCD by certain ways, uh, which I didn't have time to explain in detail, uh, we can move either one of them or the other or both. So, uh, and this motion and modification of QCD, uh, you can study with ensemble of this instant dance and you can also do it on a lattice, which is supposed to be from first principle and compare. So it compares well, let's say. And the last thing I said, so we have, so to say, semi-classical theory of temperature around uh, phase transitions, which both transitions are explained in terms of these objects. The, the confinement is related to uh, kind of symmetry back reaction on this uh, holonomy parameter and the uh, chiral transition is related to collectivization of their bound states. Zero. So it is under control uh, numerically and uh, it looks good. Now, final thing which I told you is this Poisson duality. So there are, uh, there is one example which indeed you can do uh, semi-classical monopole sum, semi-classical instant sum. They look different, but produce the same partition function at the end. I showed you a simple example of particle in a circle where the same thing happened. Uh, it's clear that what are different philosophy. One is a Hamiltonian philosophy the, with states uh, with fixed energy and the other is Lagrangian which fix paths with certain binding numbers, logically different paths in the planet. Okay, so if we go to those monopoles and uh, instant ions, the instant ions correspond to this path with some periodicity in the Sabara time, and the monopoles are particles which have certain states. So they're moving particles which have energy, momenta, et cetera, et cetera, and you can uh, calculate partition function for them as particles. Assuming that Poisson duality holds and that we correctly do our instant on time sum, we generated monopole sum. And of course, it doesn't prove that this is exact thing. And it doesn't prove that we understand what these monopoles are, we don't. Nevertheless, the, the monopoles which the latest people identified by the precision uh, have density dependence and temperature and other things in agreement with this uh, rather than trivial partition function. So the lesson is you should either use this language or that language, but not mix them together because they are actually dual to each other. Furthermore, I would say any non-trivial phenomena in non-perturbative QCD should have two explanations, one in this language, one in that language. 
which will look different, but at the end of the day would be the same. Because this is just two different ways of treat the same system. That's kind of interesting duality. It's not like other dualities. So that's it. Yes, I uh, think I exhausted time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. It was very up for the seminar. Thank you very much. Okay. Question, question from the audience. Thank you. So, so no, questions. No, no. Now, now okay. we have lots of participants left. Maybe you have questions. Questions. Thanks for the nice summary. I do have questions. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, so I think I think the interesting aspect probably you emphasize very nice in the summary is the some uh, partition function that you compute from some abelian monopoles on one side, right? And also right. some eastern tone dial out there that compute on another world. Right. I, I calculate instant dials. This monopulse is production from people who do lattice. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so they then, right. they claim they found this object. We didn't understand what they are. Yes. Okay. So now the thing is that uh, I think the difficult part is that uh, how do you define such an object? Maybe even more mathematically, because these things is too hard to understand just from those uh, colorful picture. Yes. So it would be nice to have some mathematical characterization. For example, instanton is clear. We call GG duo or FF duo, but yes. it's just a second chain class of the associated vector boundary. Right, you, we have explicit uh, solutions. Gauge. Yes, we have explicit so, solution. So, they right. are they solve Young Mills equation. Uh, we have analytic formula, so we know what so, they are. So, can you show me the formula? For example, what, what, what exactly is the, the, the quantum number like characterize them? It should be some quantized number, right? Uh, what, what's that quantum number? Is that chain class, or is there some maybe pi one for multiple group, or is that the uh, Cohomology class, for example, is that number. Otherwise, it's not quite clear why it's the object. I cannot just see the picture. You, you're asking second. about now instant on the monopole. Instant on dial on one side. Monopole is not your. Well, one. instant on dial yeah. is also. Uh, so the solution which uh, Pierre Van Bal demonstrated, it is a solution with topological charge one, and it is like an instant on it. It's Integral GG dual over space is one. So it's topological charge one. That's what you called uh, chain class two. It's a particular topology. However, it consists of three pieces and it has an, enough parameters which allow to put these pieces away from each other or on top of each other. The action is the same because it's self dual. The action is defined by topological charge. But the, uh, these are these objects. So if they put them far from each other, you have a simplified form. All of it, independent where they are overlapping or not overlapping or far from each other, all of it is a solution of Young Mills equation. These are static solution? No, they're for yeah. dimensional. They're for dimensional. Like instanton is for dimensional. In this case, the Dependence on time and dependence on space are not the same. That's and because time is periodic and space is not. They are localized at one point in the space time, in 4D space time. They are localized like instanton near no, the. No, they're, they're not. So it, once again, instanton is four dimensionally symmetric yes. uh, uh, ball. So yes, but, but, but you, right. you, are, you associate su such a pseudo particle at the origin that you. Right. So, right. so that, that's what I say. No, and that's this what I say. That's ensemble is. is ensemble of those. How so about they, the, they have four-dimensional locations, and, yes, and of course other parameters. Like you can rotate them, etc. So, so internal is like as people maybe call pseudo particle. It is there's one particle, so but it's four-dimensional. It's four-dimensional. Four yes, there is four, a, a four, four space-time okay. configurations. But how about the this one dial? What are the additional? The instant and dial are. It turns out that when in this setting with uh, which number one time is on, on a circle, Matsubara circle of particular size, and this Polyakov line or holonomy takes certain value, which correspond to a node field have certain value 
all, all over the universe, so to say. Then uh, the instant on the solutions of Young's equation, which at large distances go to this value, to this holonomy value. And these solutions are still four dimensional, but they can be disassembled in terms of action. They can be separated into pieces, which we call instant dimes. In terms of, but it's not complete disassemble because they're still connected with Dirac strings. And that is why each of these piece can in principle have topological charge fractional, any fraction, only three together make one. See? So in some, the instant can be split into pieces. So what, what well, actually it does split into pieces naturally. Yeah. What, what are the numbers three? I, 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 let me let me put it away. Sorry for asking because it's maybe the center. Oh, it's center, important to yeah, ask. Cent, cent, yes, center of this talk. For example, the Simon Donaldson in Stony Brook, right? Does he understand this object? Is that mathematically a solution or something that can be well defined? That's basically what I'm asking. Uh, and, and I think you say, yeah, I, I don't understand. You say there are three. In SO3, three, three, there are three separate three. lumps, which uh -huh. in terms of action and G squared and GG dual, which are equal because all of this is self dual. Exactly. So electric equal magnetic. So G squared and GG dual are up to a sign, the same thing. So integral of GG dual is topological charge. The topological charge of each lump is a fraction of one. The three together add to one. But other than that, they could be arbitrary and uh, so if you look at the action or topological charge distribution, we see three independent lumps. And if we extract by means of this fermionic zero modes from lattice configuration, which correspond to physical vacuum from first principle, we do see that, yes? So maybe I show them again. It was one achievement, this one. So, so this is, if you select one fermionic state with either zero or close to zero, there are eigenvalues, which, so to say, taken out of quark condensate states with this small character. You see that it consists of these bumps and the bumps, you can calculate integral over the bump and it is fraction of one. And uh, if you, look at the shape of the peak, it corresponds to our classical, to solution of the Dirac equation in the field of this dime. So it is a zero mode of one specific dime. This is a zero mode of another dime. This is zero mode of the third. So, so we literally see that the wave function of the vacuum, uh, of quarks in the vacuum, I should say, uh, look like they're a bound state to this object, to this object, to this object, etc. So, so it is ensemble of these objects. So you require introduce fermion, not just pure Yamil's gauge theory. Well, for this particular paper, yes, because we are looking at gauge fields, so to say, through the eyes of fermions, looking at small, lowest line Dirac eigenvalues. This is our filter, and this filter doesn't see millions of muons, but it does see topology in this form. So we can count them, we can say how many of each kind, uh, at, and this changes the temperature, etc. And they are specially separated? These sometimes they're separated, sometimes they're on top of each other. Even if they're on top of each other, we have this solution from here one bow, which describes their shape. And even if two or all three, if all three are completely on top of each other, it basically the original instant. If all three are at the same location, the shape and everything together is the old instant. But they can be not on the same location. Because they're only be nice. connected by the rock string, which has no uh, tension and can be arbitrarily uh, separated. Yes. 
it would be nice to know the mathematical characterization of this object further, especially these three lumps. I'm not sure what exactly that correspond to. At least not to me, maybe other people in the audience know. Right. Like okay. a lot, yeah, a lot of objects you mentioned is kind of known, like you are screen, you can use pi one of the gauge pool that's at U1. And it's an instant home of a C2 train class. And and the uh, well, and the Wilson line we know some representation of the gauge group that the uh, user acts as the Wilson line. But it, this object, I'm not sure what exactly that corresponds to. Mm -hmm. if, if that is known, it, it will be very clear what exactly that means. Okay, so so I told you about two types of objects which may be new to you. One are spherons which are three-dimensional magnetic objects, like monopoles. Actually. However, they are not monopoles. They don't have a radial uh, magnetic field. The magnetic field goes in circles. And they are SU2 beasts. So uh, SU2 group has three generators. There are three uh, magnetic field. And one of them rotates around x-axis, then around y-axis and z-axis. And the total B squared, gauge invariant, is a spherical symmetric. So it's a spherical symmetric magnetic balls. If you start from that ball, they explode. We have an analytic solution how they explode. We are looking for this object on the collider for QCD and electronic PA. Now, this is one type of new objects. This is Swallerons and uh, Swallerons power states. And the other is this instant dials which are at finite temperature, Euclidean. So you cannot see them uh, outside of computer, the Euclidean space time. They are four dimensional solutions and they are just fractions of the instant on which somehow is possible to separate in space, but not completely. They're still connected by the abstract. That, and in terms of this instant dials, we have statistical mechanics of them. There are uh, NC and NC of antidions together. They make statistical system. We can solve it. On computer, we typically have about, let's say, 300 of them. Each of them have three positions. That makes it about 1,000 variables. Uh, statistical mechanics with 1,000 dimensional integral with piece of cake compared to lettuce where they have about billion variables instead of thousand. And they have much smaller volumes and not so many instantaneous. So we have some classical theory of our phase transitions and we worked out some deformations of QCD which can affect those phase transitions. So that's the state of the art. That's yeah, the state thank of the art. Okay. Thanks very much. Well, thank so you for much. the explanation. I will okay. ask you now later. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions? Thank audience? you for inviting me. Thank you very much for explaining this. Okay. So, 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 so you get you, you get the file, right?